Well, it's cleanup day here at Tully River Quail. Um, we had a weekend uh, garage sale here in the community. And so the wife had me doing a lot of that stuff while I was trying to do a bunch of other stuff. Build my outdoor cage. Um, finish off my back deck here. Trying to get that leveled out and I'm trying to put another layer in that battery that's going to be for my uh, my hatchlings as they grow out there that'll have a quarter inch uh, flooring that I've made here so my shop's kind of beat up because again busy doing a bunch of other stuff but in the midst of all that looky who came so far, it's been less than 24 hours, about 16 hours, and we already have a 70% hatch rate. So pretty good job for a do-it-yourself incubator with homemade egg turners and using a dishwasher. <laughs> anyway, so I got a couple guys here that just came out of the shell. And I got a couple guys pipping and unzipping. Well, there's three guys in there now. So, come on, buddy. Let's get up. There you go. Get a moving. So, one of the things I want to talk about here is... Let me see if I can zoom in on this. See these guys that are partially pipped? And the shell has a... A lot of, I guess, yolk sac exposed. Well, that guy's actually starting to wiggle a little bit. But you get concerned about whether they're going to dry up in there and they're going to have a hard time hatching. So one of the things I saw, that one was pipped, one had a dry egg sac around them. And I tried to break a little bit of the shell and use my finger with some water to kind of moisten the, the membrane. I just have a little bit of clean water here. Put my finger on that and go over the area that has more shell exposing the membrane. Um, I've helped a couple out, but you want to make sure that you don't help them. Like in the picture I just showed you where they're already, they're zipping, but they're not done yet. You don't want to screw with those guys unless you know that there's a problem and they're they're having a problem. I mean, if that stays like that for another 10 hours, I'll see what I can do about um, maybe helping the guy out if I see him moving around in there. But they're still connected to the yolk sac with their umbilical. And there's still blood vessels there that need to close up. So if you take them out of their egg too early... Even though they've pipped and maybe poked one little hole through, it doesn't mean the whole thing's going to dry up if you have your humidity set on 65, 70, 75. So luckily it's been raining here the last day or two. So we have a pretty high humidity rate as is. Um, and I've just opened the door here so you can see I'm going up. Um, up to the 70, 75 so keep those guys a little bit moist like i said if you have a lot of shell missing that's exposed maybe put a little bit of water you know obviously you don't want to get water inside the egg you don't want to drown anybody but uh it's a good idea to help that not dry out um, like i said last night i had maybe a quarter of the shell taken off one side and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's going to die. I actually opened up one part and there was blood in there. And I'm like, oh, he'll never make it. I killed one. Bummer. And uh, those are my Moringa trees. I just started I'm trying to sell Moringa trees, teaching everybody about Moringa at the yard sale. Hey. Printed up flyers and stuff. Uh, there's one of my slabs that I make stuff out of. I wish I had a professional video guy. Anyway, another slab. Another slab I finished. Almost. 
have this big tree out there that I'm going to cut up and make some more big slabs. So anyway, I left the guy in there. The shell was pretty much denuded. The egg sac was still intact, except for where he poked his nose through. And uh, geez, I come out here this morning expecting to take him out and he'd be dead and I didn't want to get any bacteria and stuff in there. And when you know it, he was starting to try to wiggle through there, but the, the sack was so dry that he couldn't poke through. So I just used a little scalpel that I have and, you know, gently, uh, I'm a dentist, so I have the technique that I can remove that sack real, you know, I slit it open basically slightly at a time, pricking it as they would from the outside. And, uh... He popped out and he's running around inside the incubator right now. So, pretty good deal. Um, again, don't do this too early. Give them time to hatch. This isn't a race. Um, you'll find that within the first day of hatching, usually you'll get once they one one starts hatching, you'll get maybe 30, 40 percent of your eggs to hatch in that very time. But because there's difference in birds difference in the males that were used to mate, um, difference in uh, the shipping, you know, you never know what's going to cause birds to hatch on day 24 for Bob White, day 20 or, I'm sorry, 17 for Caternix. So you get them out of lockdown, you'll see about 50% will hatch the first day, and then another 20% the next day, and then by day 19 you'll get a few stragglers, and then you know after day 20 you just turn it down and it's over so I don't know I think it's it's good to help them if you can but you don't want to help them too early because you don't want to disrupt that blood supply you don't want them bleeding to death because they're still attached and then the fun begins well that's it for now for Tully River Quail got some work today like I said I'm gonna clean up the shop here and I'm going to work on getting that outdoor brooder going, put in some electric there with my heat lamps. Um, I actually got these little temperature thermometer things that I can use to monitor. So when it's sunny out, I will be able to set the, the heaters. This guy here. So this is a 12 volt. Uh, switch basically that will turn on a thermometer so it'll use this sensor and I'll put it under the heat lamp under a mat and then there's a little 12 volt plus or minus on here I'll run from my new solar panel controller my MPP from HQST on 3 hike <laughs> anyway I'll run power to these guys and then I'll run 110 but I'll switch I'll interrupt the negative, the neutral line through this switch and it'll send power to it when it needs to be higher and it'll shut it off once you've reached the temperature they set it. So I'll set it at a range that I want and then I can change it from you know, 95 in the first week, 90 the second week, 85 the next week and I'll be able to control even the inside I can put two of them in there and I can control the right side will be a little hotter than the left side and that'll give them a chance but it also save on energy so it's not always on so it'll be it'll kick on and off throughout the day just to maintain the heat that's needed but I'm anxious to get that together I'll send you a picture once I get her going but uh, for now say good bye guys Stay free, guys. <laughs>